The worst that you can find is amongst its resolutions, there will be a statement that, that will state that Jewish Bolshevism, all right, was the under, underpinning of the Communist Party in Ukraine, which in fact was true. But the OUN or the UPA never had a mandate against Jews. There was never an agenda against Jews. In other words, you will never find a document, nor will you find an eyewitness who was a member of the OUN or the Ukrainian insurgent army who will say, yes, our purpose or our mission was to assist the Germans in decimating the Jewish population. In fact, UPA, that's frankly ridiculous because the Jewish population essentially had already been either decimated or deported to concentration camps by the time the UPA was created in 1942. Oun was intent on creating its own, creating a Ukrainian state. And given that fact, it exploited the fact that there was a conflict in 1941 between Hitler. Hitler decided that he's following Molotov-Ribbentrop. Two years later, he decided he's going to go on his own and he's going to invade the Soviet Union. And the Oun saw this as an opportunity to proclaim Ukrainian independence. But the Oun submitted a memorandum to the Nazis in, in, in somewhere mid-June, before roughly three or four days before the, the Nazis actually invaded Western Ukraine. In that memorandum, they told Hitler, in no, in, 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 in unequivocally, they said that if you do not identify yourself with an independent Ukrainian state, but rather you go against it, you will find us to be your worst enemies. And there simply is no evidence of a concerted effort on the part of the OUN, all right, or the UPA to annihilate Jews. Now, one can say, all right, that, but that they do everything in their power to protect Jews. And the answer is probably no. And the reason why they didn't is because there was an animosity between Ukrainians and Jews. There was a period of time, I'm not even going back to the famine, but the famine was engineered by Stalin, but it was carried out by Lazar Kaganovich and most of the secret service people who were in Ukraine implementing the famine of 1932-33 were Jews. Jews constituted the bulk of the KGB in Ukraine, the original Chikadi and Kavideh, and so forth and so on. And then even, even my mother used to tell me that when, when uh, the Soviets came into Western Ukraine in 1939, my, my mother was a, a landowner, and she had a number of uh, Jewish people working for her. And when the Soviets came in, a number of those Jewish people went to work with the Soviets. And what resulted was, I mean, the atrocities, the the, what, what was unearthed after the Soviets left in 1941 was mass executions of Ukrainian patriots in, in view and all over Western Ukraine. And unfortunately, the fact of the matter is, you know, much as I would like it not to have happened that way, that the Jews who were conscripted by the Jewish Ukrainian, Amer Ukrainian Jews who were conscripted by the Soviets, they were they implemented the Soviet policies. So what transpired when the Soviets fled in 1941 it, and the Nazis came in, there were, you know, even Roman Shukevich found his own brother among, among the uh, dead of, uh, of the local prisons in view. And there were others who found that and they who found their own relatives. And, and so what they did is with their, and there's no doubt about it, that there was a pogrom against the Jewish population in the early days of the Nazi invasion of Lviv. But who carried out this pogrom, all right, the only evidence that has been submitted in this regard by Mr. Himka, for example, are photographs. And the photographs, yes, the woman who's being persecuted looks like a Jewish woman. Why? Why is she a Jewish woman, all right? And the people standing there, they could be Ukrainians, they could be Polish, they could be Jews, they could be other nationalities. The funny thing is, well, is that Lviv, despite it being a Ukrainian city, in 1941, in June of 1941, had less than 20% of its population was Ukrainian. So chances are that most of the people 
who perpetrated the pogroms were not Ukrainian, but some were Ukrainians. And I'm not also I'm not suggesting that all members of the OUN were blameless because there were good people and there were bad people. If you had if he if a member of the OUN had a neighbor who, who was Jewish and who happened to conspire with the Soviets, I'm sure he went after him. You know, uh, the point is that this is all a part of history. But what what happened and what the facts are, the documents will present the facts. And the documents are unequivocal. German documents are clear because the Germans were fed up with the Ukrainians because the Ukrainians would not participate in the persecution and the annihilation of Jews. There are German documents to that effect. I'm talking about Western Ukraine. And there isn't a single document, all right, which will, in a OUN document or UPA document, which will be a directive to its members to go out and kill Jews or to assist in the Holocaust. There will be a resolution. There was a resolution at one of the Congresses, like I mentioned, that said that, that did an analysis and said that, and in fact, they said that Jews were the underpinning of Bolsheviks, but uh, Bolshevism in Ukraine. But it, it goes on to say, and <laughs> conveniently, Himka forgets to mention the next sentence. The next sentence says, but Jews are not our enemy. Our problem are the Bolsheviks. Our problem is the Soviet Union. And the OUN was extremely certain of this.